Hello everyone and welcome back to Kronos Plays Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Today we are going to here because apparently we need to save Pearl from Luke, though she's just lost. Ah, Mr. Nick, Mystic Maya, Pearly! I never thought I'd see the two of you again! So, uh, is Mr. H's detective out of the office? Yes, when I arrived here, there wasn't a single soul in sight. Sadly. Say, Nick, doesn't it look like something's changed since we were here last? The big bag? Now you mention it. This bag, it sure wasn't here before. I'm sure it wasn't here before. Looks quite full. I wonder what could be in here. Hey, Nick! Come on, open it up! I want to steal from it! Hey, wait a minute, we can't just open up his private property. Don't be such a fuddy daddy! This is an important investigation! That's true, and truth be told, I have to admit I am kind of curious. Well, it kind of looks like a doctor's bag, to be quite honest. Uh, what's in there? Like an old school doctor's bag. Hang on, I'm, I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kind of hard and smooth. Oh, hello there! Eek! He's here! What are you doing, sir lawyer? I'm shocked to see a servant of court. Of the court? Ignoring the law of uh, flagrant. Flagrant? So flagrantly, yes. I'm really sorry. Maya made me do it. Nick! I can't believe you would tell the truth like that! A gentleman never uses a lazy excuse for his own poor behavior. The real question is can you afford to waste time lollygagging about here? What do you mean by that? Perhaps I should make myself more clear. Tomorrow's trial. Zavare! Shall we save a figurative? Sir William will be dropping his panties before lunchtime. What? Wow, Nick! Sounds like it's gonna be really exciting! <laughs> Tomorrow's trial. Um, what's going to happen at tomor uh, the tomorrow's trial that's so dramatic? Do you know what your biggest mistake so far has been, sir lawyer? It was becoming a lawyer in the first place! That certainly doesn't so does sound like a big mistake, Mr. Nick. Tomorrow will be a day to remember. I, Luke at me, will take the stand. And then, Zavare, my testimony will prove to be the undoing of a lot of you. Or you'll be, like, convicted of being the mask, one or the other. Yes, all of you, I'll unmask you as the thief's co-conspirators! Conspirators? <laughs> You're quick on the defensive, I see. However, it's not that it's not I that is your greatest enemy. There's a far more dangerous that that you will face during the trial. What are you talking about? So lawyer, if you truly are who you say, I'm sure you heard of him. His name is That's a good doe, right? That's good though. Go it. Go it. What? Go it. Go it. Go it. Go it? No. Good though. It's good though. It is good though. Good though. Okay. Faster. Good though. Oh wait, no, that was slower. Good though. It's good though. Okay. Good though. I thought it was good though. But then I put it into text to speech just to make sure, and it's like, go to it. No, it's good dough. Okay. I knew, I thought it was good dough. His name is good dough. I just wanted to double check. Good dough. I don't know who that is. You have taken a step down the path of foolishness to try to defend a career criminal who deserves nothing less than the def death penalty. Hey, last time I checked, no one knows for sure if Mr. Delight is really Damascus. And why would he get the death penalty for stealing? Like, getting his hands chopped off, sure, maybe. His legs chopped off, eh, we can make a deal, sure. But why death penalty? <laughs> My dear lady, times may change, but people, sadly, do not. I mean, preach, brother. Well, you will understand this when you are more mature. Good dough. Um, who is this good dough person? It's not surprising that a spirit medium has no heart, not heard of the name. Kido, the prosecutor who, who's equal and cannot be found in the country, but in heaven. 
Gadow, a legend or myth? Men pin a, pin a lifetime of hope on the chance of simply to meet him. Who the f who the hell who the hell is he? Prosecutor Gadow. But the best prosecutor in the country isn't Gadow, it's Mr. Edgeworth. Isn't that right, Nick? It's no surprise that a spirit medium such as yourself would not know would know nothing of this. But Ace Prosecutor Miles is currently traveling abroad. Huh? In fact, it was Mr. Edwards who acknowledged Godot as the best in the country. And you agree with that? Most certainly. In fact, you could call him the Luke at me of the prosecutors. Oh, thank God, he's gonna be an idiot. Well, that's good to hear. The prosecution has a fighting chance tomorrow. Mr. Nick, is this Godot really that strong? Um, I seem to remember hearing about someone like that. Really? Because I don't. Not surprising. Some people spend their entire lives idly waiting for his appearance. It looks like we were done investigating for the day. <laughs> Sir Lawyer, the stage has been set and all the pieces are finally in place. All that remains now is for the dance to begin. A new prosecutor, an ace detective, and a thief walk into a bar. This will be a tough trial. To be continued. Uh, save? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll save. Uh, did I really not save in between episodes? Oh my god, I'm a goddamn idiot. Okay, that's fantastic. I gotta not do that, just in case, like, the freaking crashes or something. Alright, October 13th, 9.30 in the morning. It's too early for this. Hey, Nick! What is this? Is something wrong? Nah, but did you see all the people here? It's crazy! Oh, so check out the, the mask, the mask glo uh, glossy I bought. You bought this? Where? From the little tents in front of the courthouse. They have all sorts of things for sale. You know I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff, Nick. Where do you think all my money goes? Well, actually your money, because I don't actually have a job. Come on, I'm guilty. Throw the book at me. Who's screaming like that? Oh, Mr. Wright, uh, you made it. Yeah, I did, but it doesn't look like things are going to be get any going to get any less ugly for you. <laughs> because I did it! I'm the criminal! Me, me, me! Um, you said it again. I sent the calling card to load the killer. I admit it! But you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true, but that doesn't mean that I didn't commit the crime. Normally when I say, of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic, but you, yikes. Anyway. Uh, anyway, I admit that I'm guilty, so make sure they give me the guilty verdict, please. Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, Desi, honey. Bonjour. Well, actually, I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Um, uh, uh well, you see, actually, the thief is, uh, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee that my Ronnie is innocent. If he de if he's declared guilty, I'll be ever so cross with you. So why are you smiling when you say it? Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got some errands I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nicky boy. Good luck. To be honest, I really don't know whether Ron is Damask or not, but there's one thing I'm sure of. He doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Uh, Mr. Light, it's time for your it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust De Desiree. Oh, wait, you were in like the title picture, right? Yeah. So you're good though? Okay. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Dots. What about the prosecution? Are you prepared as well? What a stupid question. What did you say? Fine, let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? Huh? What? No, uh, I'm not. I'll pass judgment after I hear the arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be... So this guy's an idiot. That's a rule to live by. Um, who are you? I'm Godot. Legendary prosecutor, 
I've never lost the case until today. Huh, he's the one that Detective Amy was talking about. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Huh, none. What did you say? I never prosecuted a case before. Never, but you said you are never lost before. Exactly. <laughs> I've never lost. I've never won before either. This is your first case? Dog, I hate to break it to you. You can't be a legendary prosecutor if you've never done a goddamn prosecution before. Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? Even the mightiest of Redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings. Yes, but a mask in a court of law. Huh. Don't you know anything? No matter the man, we all wear masks. Either on our faces or over our hearts. I gotta put that on my live blog, on live journal when I get home. This guy is the real deal, alright, Nick? This guy is the real deal, alright, Nick? Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? Why does, it, why does it seem like all prosecutors are idiots? So we might finally meet Mr. Phoenix Trite. Nick, is he a friend of yours? No, I don't have any friends that call me trite. Who's this masked man? I return from the depths of hell to do battle with you. Well then, um, Prosecutor Gado Gobo. It's not Gobo, it's Gado, Your Honor. In any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statement? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trite. What is it? Are you familiar with the saying, a chain is only as strong as the weakest link? I wonder how much you can withstand before you and your case break into two. Well then, let's hear the first witness. <laughs> My name is... No one has asked for your name, witness. Uh, I'm Dick Gumshoe? Important thing is what you know, that's all. Start talking, we're listening. Uh, yes sir, yes! Alright, witness, uh, first let's hear about what you know about the thief that stole the urn. Yes sir! Alright. Master Maskey is a master thief uh, for that first start of this crime spree six months ago. He's so calm that he sends his call card before he even commits the crime. This was his first, fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card on to Lord the Tailor. His pattern is to always go after only the most precious art piece. That's how I was sure it was, was Master Mask, sir. It fits his M.O. to a T. Hmm. So then the actual identity of this Master Mask is... Mr. Good... Gabo, what are you? Uh, we're in the middle of the trolley here, Mr. Godot. Blacker than the moonless night, hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much. Your honor. Oh, please, proceed. Very well, it's only coffee after all. Judge. Grow up here, man. What? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you going to do? As long as I haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity, all we can do is show that what that wasn't Mask the Mask who stole the urn. All right, Gumshoe. I, I'm going to press you on everything. I'm sorry, but it's just how we do things here. Have you been involved in the investigation from the beginning? Yep! Nobody knows more about the thief than me, pal! It's true! I am Zavare, author of thieves! An author? He's written a book about thieves? Uh, I think he probably meant to say authority. <laughs> the fact that this guy can slip through even my fingerprints shows how good he is, pal! It's easy when those fingerprints happen to be butterfingers. Uh, press harder, I guess? So nobody knows more about the thief than you, huh? Uh, you got a pal! Except maybe for, like, the thief's mom, that is! But isn't there someone who knows even more about him than the police? You don't mean Detective Zavare, do you? Hmm, who is this person, Zavare? He sounds German. 
His name is <laughs> His name is Luke Atney. Sir, I guess I shouldn't have made such a uh, such a silly name for him. What the heck? I guess he's not all that famous after all. Anyway, uh, it's true that he did manage to retrieve the last item the thief stole. Oh, I see. Seems you're not the expert you claim to be. Uh, it looks like the thief is toying with me even now. Poor Butterfingers. Have you seen all these so-called calling cards? Of course I have! Except... Well, the person in charge of the, the treasure exhibit had never brought their car to the police station. So I didn't see this one until after the crime occurred. Because Detective Atme stopped Mr. Uh, Ms. Andrews from t taking it to the police. Was the calling card that Lowly Taylor received authentic? Well, all the calls have cards have one th one uh, common identifying feature. But not, we're not releasing that information on the general to the general public. But you're absolutely certain that this card is real. I'm sure you can't say it out loud, but I bet he's talking about mask to mask symbol. Hold it. His fifth heist and your fifth screw up, huh? Objection, pal! That ain't fair! Maybe you could say I screwed up four times, but this last time wasn't my fault! I didn't know about the calling card this time! You, of all people, shouldn't be chuckling about this, Detective Gumshoe. I just want everyone here in the courtroom to know something. If you ever get a calling card from this guy, don't call the stupid private eye! Call your local police right away! Got it? Ah, oh, looks like he's really got it, got it in for Detective Atme. I mean, I can get that. Our piece is like what, for example? Well, his first target was the famous terror of uh, Imanon. Imanon? Imanon. Dun, dun. What's that? Some kind of especially salty teardrop? N n no, sir, it's a blue diamond, a single red diamond. Next was the crown of Bongora, who, you know, the thing you put on your head? After that was the left hand of Hades and the portrait of Magina, sir. Death of Atme retrieved the portrait of Magina and returned it to the museum. And the target of his fifth and last robbery was the Sacred Urn, right? But isn't it difficult for him to dispose of such famous art pieces? Well, we assume he must have some underworld connections. Somehow, Mr. Light doesn't look the type. Yeah, he's a little too sunny to be hanging out in the underworld. Uh, what do you mean by it's, it fits his M.O. to a T? I was thinking of asking the same thing myself. Uh, I wish you would listen a little more closely, pal. First of all, there's the calling card. We're 100% certain that it's authentic. Then there's the fact that he seemed to know all about the security system. And finally, his target was an art piece. These are all part of the thieves' that modus operandi. And so, since his robbery seems to fit all those conditions, I actually thought the judge was about to say, and so how does this add a T to the MO? That's right, it means that mass of mass behind it. Nick, it definitely looks like it was Mask the Mask who stole the urn. But there's no real evidence either way as to whether Ron Delight is Mask the Mask. But, but... Also, the urn hasn't turned up yet, let alone a connection to Mr. Delight himself. So even though we know it was Mask the Mask that did it... Maybe for the time being, I should try to show it wasn't Mask the Mask that did it. Okay, so we already know Ron was not there, right? He was working... The urn is not an art piece, right? It has no monetary value, like most art, true, but... It's not an art piece, it is a treasure. Objection! That was apparently right. Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe, if that is your real name? Just hearing the little in that question is making me nervous. <laughs> you said that he always goes after the most precious art piece, right? That's right, pal! But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly ra rise to the level of precious art. What do you mean? Nick! How can you say such a terrible thing? No, I meant from a financial point of view. I mean, it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Godot, what is the value of the urn? The appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it. And I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, 
It was not the kind of item that Massive Mass would normally go after. Er hmm, I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright. You're saying that the theft of the Sacred Urn was not the work of Mass Damask. Uh, yeah? That's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself, but apparently... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Was the last robbery the work of Mass Damask or not? What do you th have to say about this, Mr. G Godot? Is the coffee a little nutty? The coffee. It's my own special blend. I call it Godot number 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. That's the only thing I got on my mind, uh, on my mind right now, Mr. Trite. What? If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. Huh. Sorry, but I don't get what you may mean. You're saying it wasn't Master Mass that stole the urn. Then it must be someone an intimidating Master Mass method. A fake. A fake the mask? Fake the mask? That sounds ridiculous, but I like it! Now, before I decide on my coffee, at least some proof is in order, Mr. Trey. Proof that a person who appeared at Lowly Taylor that night was actually a fake. Hmm. Though I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior, his point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. Looks like I'm going to have to prove it. I need proof that the person at Lowly Taylor that night was in fact fake the mask. Ah, oh, mother... Okay. Um... Oh shit, right, wait a minute. We have... We... <laughs> this freaking Amy had a photo. Uh... Very convincing. Is there a difference here? There is a difference! There's no big face! Oh, I'm on to you. The proof is right here. This looks like a photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. Huh. Well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is? Go on, use this pointer and show us just what this picture is so peculiar something. I think he said peculiar, but right here. It's right here, of course. You mean, Master Mask. My hair, I, I have here a piece of reference I would like the court to look at. Isn't that the publicity photo I bought this morning? Did you buy it from, like, his wife? The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch on Damask's chest. A breach? Here, bailiff, <laughs> get my steed. We need to retreat at once. A brooch, your, your honor. It's sort of a clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp? Hmm. Ah, I see now. But the mask, the mask in the security cam photo... Ah! He has no brooch! That brooch is the same as the emblem on the mask calling card and serves as a symbol. But the thief that broke into Lordly Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this mask, the mask is a fake. I've been fooled again! I mean, he's not wrong. Order! It's true. Undeniably true. Detective Gumshoe, how? How could you have overlooked this? I'm sorry, sir! I don't know how I... Hey, now. If you're gonna have a pity party, invite me, too. Because I'm apparently, like, just full of cringe. Mr. Godot, you deserve some blame on this, too. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Huh. The brooch you're talking about. Do you mean this? Ah! That's... That's the mass brooch? Where did you find it? Well, I always have a good nose for evidence. I got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha st statue. Buddha statue? It must mean Amy Faye. Why didn't you tell us about that, sir? I always put evidence away in my pocket. After all, it's a safe place for crucial evidence. Grr! 
This guy has one cool customer. I highly disagree with that. It's a little early to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? This guy feels like the definition of a poser. On both the internet sense and reality sense. That friend of yours has uh, left a pretty little, pretty little hickeys on there, too. Hickeys? Figuratively speaking, of course. I'm referring to Rondelite's fingerprints. What? What? The defendant's fingerprints on the brooch. Order. Order in the court. Mr. Gudo, let's see the brooch. I've grown attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Hmm. She, I mean, it appears to have been torn off some clothes. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously, there must be a, been a big struggle that night at the crime scene. Uh-oh. Phoenix, we have a problem. It's Houston we have a problem. Phoenix, not Phoenix. Ha! Huh. You mess with Godot. And you get burned. Huh, he's been playing me like a violin. Well, Judge, I'm ready to call my next witness. Huh? You're done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. That doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> I mean, he's right. Bailiff, bring the next witness into the courtroom. Finally time for the ace detective to make his appearance. Huh. I guess? One second is one drip of co and one second is one drip of the coffee cup pot. Let's hurry it up. Sheesh! Silence! <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What's clear? Zavare! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor. A coffee maniac at, at that. And am I correct? Well, yes. That's right. Are you an idiot? Huh. Not bad. Not bad at all. You're the first person that's ever, ever, ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. Well, Sir Prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Luke Atme, ace detective and rising star illuminating the heavens. Boy, these two make perfect pair. They either be the best friends or they tear each other's heads off. I've heard that on the night of the crime, you were all alone on security detail. You have, uh, you have heard correctly. My specially made monocle is worth more than a hundred detective gumshoes. So zero? It's worth zero. A zero times zero, like anything times zero is zero. If detective gumshoe was worth anything that is, oh, you beat me to it. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyways? Because he's the real crook? There must be some reason, I'm sure of it. Well then, tell us what this special monocle of yours witness. What I witnessed. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the date changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Master Mass, dancing, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fast blow upon my noble head. Doctor slawed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Thirty minutes later, I used the emergency phone to notify the police. So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal? My specially made monocle never misses a thing, except for everything. However, this, that, is, that is limited to things that fall within my visual range. But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seems to be proud of his performance that evening. Well, sir old timer, let me explain. We're not speaking of any ordinary thief, but the king of thieves. The... You can't only steal six things. Five things, really, because one of them will get returned, right? You cannot steal five things and be labeled King of Thieves. That's not enough. And he got captured on his sixth attempt of stealing something. He is a joke among thieves. Anyways, the great master mass, my arch enemy. That's why my instincts and my years of experience. Years? Well, proceed with the cross -examin examination, Mr. Wright. What I witnessed, cross examination. Well, you know, we'll examine him like 
Absolutely next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Bye.